prayed, prayed really hard, which is good. Uh, really appreciate this. You know, this. Uh, I so wish we could have a lot more. You know, university education, at least the way I see it, anyway, and, and having it's supposed to be more interactive, not where we are just preaching. Preaching sometimes gets so tiring, right? Which is why we forget keys because of preaching, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious here, and we forget kids because every time it's it's become so monotonous, right? Yes. Yeah, sir. On this one. Yeah. You said you you convert this one into its binary equivalence. Mm -hmm. uh, positive. Yeah. Yeah. Then you perform one's complement on this one. Yes. So what I'm saying is, why can't you just perform the whole operation and the final answer you do one's complement? So if we, you have a negative number, how are you going to perform the operation? No, 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 this is an important question, and I, I, I get where it's coming from. I think it's to do with the fact that we haven't really been practicing a lot. But this, okay, how would you go about performing this operation? Let's, let's follow with your method. Let's do it and see. Yeah, let's do it and see. Do you understand his rationale? He's saying, instead of going through the lengthy process of saying, oh, first we're going to convert five using one's complement, and then negative three using one's complement, why can't we just perform the operation five minus three, and then, perform one's complement on the final answer. So my question is, how are we going to perform this operation, there's a negative number, how are we going to perform it without converting the numbers using one's complement first? That is the question. That's the, uh, that is the question. Why, how? Yeah? Is that answer correct the one, the negative, one negative three? Which one, this? Yeah. I don't know. No, no. This? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't know. I said, see, I honestly don't know. Yes? I, I was hoping you could tell me whether it's correct. We can cheat. Oh. We can cheat, guys. And. Uh, this is too much now, right? Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was it the one's complement one? Which one were, were, did you have doubts with? <laughs> Negative? Negative four. So if this is one's complement, negative four is here. Isn't it in four bit presentation? I don't know if this table is correct, but I don't know if it's correct, yeah? Zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. We, we don't have to go about cal calculating. So here are the answers for negative. What are we looking for, negative? Negative one minus one is supposed to be negative four. So the sign magnitude answer is supposed to be this. The, the, um, the one's complement answer is supposed to be this. Yeah? So whatever it is they did, for me really it was more about uh, wanting to give away the shirts, I guess. <laughs> so I don't know if this is correct. Okay, great. So you understand why we, we have to first of all through the, go through this tedious process of converting first? Yeah. You cannot, you see when you have a negative number, before you add those numbers, before you perform a subtraction operation, without direct subtraction, you, in fact, direct subtraction only works for positive numbers, right? The one we went through. You have to first of all convert the negative number, and currently we've only looked at one's complement. So you, you, we've answered your question. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Great, thank you very much. Brilliant question, by the way. I'm glad people are asking questions and thinking. Okay, so we, we, know, we understand this one's complement thing, and again, I just wanted to Emphasize this last bit here, right? It tends to be confusing. This last bit is important. Whenever you have, you're performing a subtraction operation or addition operation and you have a carry bit, what you do is you add it to the least significant bit. And the least significant bit is the bit on the far right hand side. Add a one to it and then add, so you perform the addition operation as you normally would, but this time around you're adding one binary number one to the resulting operation. 
Is this making sense now? Good stuff. Oh, please continue. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so so you notice that uh, I mean this this works just fine. The ones complementing works just fine, right? Our computations are pretty much accurate. Now we can try out you can try out any number of um, combinations if you wish. You realize that uh, no matter what sort of numbers you are working with, ones complement works just fine. It actually results in an accurate result, one that we can easily convert back into its equivalent decimal. Right, you notice that the reason why we decided to try out one's complement is because sine magnitude gives us wrong answers. If we try and subtract negative one and one, we don't get a zero. That's a problem there because fundamentally the machine is going to be performing those basic operations, addition and subtraction of numbers, right? So we want to make sure that uh, whatever computations it's performing are accurate. So what do we do? We looked at one's complement. It works just fine. With one exception, the problem is with the, the fact that we have two zeros. We have a negative zero and a positive zero. And it turns out, I mean, pretty smart people, people like you, um, figured out um, a pretty smart way of doing this, right? It's called, uh, uh, would, would you like us to go through the example, by the way? No? For one's complement, or it's fine. Yeah, but why don't you say this? Do I have to ask every time? Oh, Jesus, it's like you're working with babies now. All right, so example of one's complement before we go to two's complement. Seven minus three. You see, if we were to, to perform the operation seven minus three using sine magnitude, what we would have to do first is we would have to, I'm trying to make sure we understand why we have to use one's complement and not sine magnitude for computation. We would have to first of all compute um, seven, right? What is seven in binary? Okay, this is seven. This is sine magnitude, right? And what is uh, negative three using sine magnitude? Using sine magnitude, what is negative three in binary? One? One, one. Sorry? Fine. <laughs> so one, 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 okay, perfect. So look at this, right? If, if, this is, if this is negative three and this is positive seven, what we are saying is for us to compute seven minus three, it's the same as saying positive seven plus negative three, and we already have a negative three. So we're saying positive seven plus negative three. We are adding, adding zero, one and one, carry one. One and one and one, carry one. One and one, carry one. One and one, carry one. So you notice that we have an, an overflow here. We discard this, because for bit representation, one, two, three, four. So we end up with the answer, which is positive what? What is the answer here? Two. Two. So I'll ask you a question, right? Is seven minus three equal to positive two? No. no, which is why we cannot use sine magnitude for performing computations. But observe, if we instead use um, one's complement, we are saying, we go through the same process, we first of all convert seven into binary using one's complement. What is seven in binary using one's complement? It's just a normal seven, why? Because seven is a positive number. What is um, my negative three in in binary, we first of all, if we're using one's complement, we first of all convert, we first of all derive the positive equivalent of negative three, which is just three. This is three. The next step is we flip the bits to get one's complement, right? Which will give us, this is our negative three now, right? And then we subtract, I mean, sorry, we add. When we are adding now, one and zero, one, one and zero, one, one and one, Zero remainder 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 one. Eight bit representation, this has to go. Oh, sorry. 
Um, we have an overflow. What do we do with the overflow? Yes, we add it, right? We must add it. When we add it, um, one and one, zero remainder one, one and one, zero remainder one, one and nothing is one, zero, 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 zero. Now I'll ask you, what's, what's this value here in binary? What is seven minus three? So one's complement works perfectly for computations, which is a good thing. And in fact, all the machines used one's complement. But people only, like contemporary machines only started using, uh, started using tools complement because of the thing we've been obsessing on. This, we don't want this. We don't want to have a situation where we have two zeros. Why? There are huge implications of having two zeros. At some stage we start, we will discuss, I mean, we'll have a brief discussion of range of values that we have access to, depending on the bit representation you, you, you're using. If you have two zeros, the range of numbers that you're going to be working with is going to be smaller because the addition of zero is occupying space. Do you understand this? What I mean is, using four bit representation, how many numbers can we work with? What's the range of numbers? This is a range of numbers. How many integers are we going to have if we're using four bit representation? The number of integers. Fine, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, just take it by faith, we have a discussion about that. Let's not confuse things. We'll discuss um, ranges and whatnot. But the reason, one of the reasons why we're going for two's complement is we have, we have more numbers in our range to work with, right? The, the addition of zero is replaced by a number that wasn't previously there, right? Okay, so now that we understand this, please understand this. Which part? Like uh, when we say seven minus three, um, yeah, you say the number is four. The answer is four. Now why is it that we count two again? Yeah, because it's a different method. It's sign magnitude. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sign yeah, we are we are trying to kind of emphasize the fact that sign magnitude is a bad technique. It's a bad technique. The only th the only useful thing it has is it, it the, the thing it has in common with these other methods is that. The, the, the most significant bit is always used as a sign bit, right? So, yeah. So, does that mean the sign one is for computation? Why is it there? Yeah, it's just used as an example. Try and, you, we are explaining, trying to make people understand how the other techniques work. Fundamental, you see, like, um, it's like possible ways in which you can represent negative numbers. Possible ways that a computer can represent negative numbers. And granted, I'm sure someone can easily, can easily implement a hardware that could, that could uh, use sign magnitude to perform operations. But it's just that it turns out that it would be much harder than it would be if you just used tools complement. It turns out that implementation of hardware is much easier if you're just flipping bits. Right? Yes, sir. Now, if the sign, sign magnitude uh, gives us wrong answers, why is it still in the same words? Why is it still in there? Why are we still talking about it? Because it's like I say, we are supposed to use the tools complement and like the sign integer which gives us the wrong answers. Because now we go to two, which is not the correct answer. Yeah, maybe, uh, I'm not, like I said to <laughs> like I said to him, Tim, it's to make us understand how these like how we can compare different ways of representing negative numbers. It's a way of representing negative numbers. Okay, it gives us wrong results quite right, yes. There, we, hardware can be implemented. You remember, remember that uh, these operations were say one plus one minus three. <laughs> <They're>, um, <laughs> these, are, these are like operations that a computer is going to be performing. It's the hardware, right? Yeah, like a flow of electricity or no flow of electricity. What we are saying is that using sign magnitude, okay, it's not like it's giving us wrong answer. Let's just say it is harder to come up with an implementation of a computer that uses sign magnitude to perform these basic operations. It's much easier to use either one's complement or two's complement. This is fine. Yes. But understanding that is a, is a lot easier by just saying, oh look, it gives us the wrong answer. Yeah? 
gives us a wrong answer. <laughs> okay, so if, if one's complement works as fine, I hope we get it here, which is fine, perfect. Um, okay, so we still have the problem with the zeros, right? So it turns out that two's complement solves the, the, zero, the, 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 the zero pair problem that we have. Remember the problem, the fact that uh, when we use one's complement or sign magnitude, we end up with two zeros. It's not normal to have two zeros, right? It's counterproductive. Um, so lo and behold, there's two's complement. It's pretty easy, really. The heuristic is similar to one's complement. So first thing you do is um, you follow two rules. You check to see if uh, the binary representation you're working with, the two's complement equivalent by, uh, of the binary number is either if the most significant bit is a zero, then you know the number is going to be positive. If it's a one, then it's going to be a negative, right? Right? Um, if it's a if if it's a one, if it's a if it's a positive, if it's a zero, then you you, you just you don't do anything to the binary number, right? You leave it as is. If on the other hand the number you're working with is a negative number, you first of all perform one's complement on the number, right? Um, and then you add one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a heuristic. You check, is the number, if you're working with a, a number, let's say positive five, first thing you do is you check, if you're trying to convert this into binary using two's complement, you check, is, is positive five a positive number? Yeah, it is, if it is, you just convert it direct to binary, right? If on the other hand, the number you're working with is a negative number, let's say negative five, is negative five a negative number? Yes. If it's a negative number, what you do is you get the one's complement of negative five, which we know how to do, and then you add one to it. Okay. But the thing is, when you add one to it, if there's a carry bit, you discard it, throw it away. Observe, convert, oh, five is a common number here. Convert five or negative five base 10 into there's two using two's complement. What's our heuristic? We first of all get one's complement of, 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 uh, of negative five, uh, which is quite easy now, right? It's just a binary of five and then flip the bits, right? This is five and then we flip the bits, one, zero, one, zero. This we know. Second step, we add a one, right? Uh, zero and one is one, one and zero is one, zero, uh, one, right? we would have gotten our two's complement equivalent of negative five. There are more examples, let's just wait. <coughs> right, so that's that. Oh, this is a question. Yes, yeah. So there you have used uh, four bit representation. So, so when, you, when you're using four bit representation, it gives you an, an overflow. You, you have said you throw away that overflow. Yes. Yeah, so what about when you're using eight bit representation? Well, the, if there's a bit representation and there's no overflow, then you just leave it as is. It's going, the answer is going to be fine. So, as we are thinking about this hypothetical question, it's always nice when you think about uh, an expression, right? As we are walking through this, just quickly think about an expression we can perform together so that we understand. We, let's not be hypothetical. So, think about an expression that will result in maybe another, an overflow, or not an overflow, using a bit representation, and then tell us. We shall work it through. Think right now. Okay. No, it doesn't work like that. Usually, the, the bit representation is consistent. So, a question, and usually it's not about the question here, it's about uh, what, when you're working with a computer, it's either you're using 16-bit representation, maybe byte representation, which is eight bit, or maybe it could be uh, like one way, which is the two bits, right? So it will be specified. So it's either you're working with 16 bits, eight bits, or 32 bits, fixed number of bits. All right, um, right, so revisiting our table as well, you notice that uh, getting the equivalent negative numbers of these positive numbers in two's complement is pretty easy because all we have to do is, what do we do? We just, uh, we, we get the binary representation of the positive numbers 
and then uh, we, we, we get one's complement by uh, flipping the bits, right? Yes. Um, and then we add a one. Then you end up with this. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to include this is if you, if you add up the, the range of numbers in here, you notice that you only end up with one zero, which was the goal, right? So problem solved. The problem of the zero pair and the problem of ensuring that the resulting computation is actually correct. We have solved this, right? Yes. They solved this. I mean, this is two's complement. I mean, so with two's complement, I mean, look, look at this, right? Two's complement. Let's look at an example here. To prove that this, to prove that the zero pair is is gone, I guess. How do we prove that the zero pair is gone? We get uh, uh, what is. Uh, how are we going to prove that the zero pair is gone? We convert the positive zero into negative zero, right? What is positive zero in what is positive zero um, when converted into two's complement? What? Zero. How, how can I put this? What? Zero is, uh, zero is zero. Okay, let me. I'm trying to see if what I'm tr trying to. See. Okay, what is negative zero in two's complement? We first of zero. What is zero in this ten? What is negative zero base 10 using two's complement? This is the question. What we're trying to prove, we're trying to prove if the resulting answer is going to be the same as positive zero. Right, so what do we do? We say, to convert this to two's complement, first step is we get the positive first, which is one, two, three, four. Right, next step is we get One's complement, yes. which is second step is we add a one. When we add a one, one and one carry 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 one. Four bit representation, truncate, get rid of it, zero, 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 zero. So we now have one unique representation, whether it's negative zero or positive zero, which is what we we say it was a problem with one's complement. Okay. Is this making sense now? Yes. And in fact, true to that, if you try and do your evaluation here, if you do minus one plus one, you get the correct answer, right? Observe, if we said we want to compute uh, negative two minus three, right? We want, to, we want to check to see if the computations are correct. We can, we can start with Okay, we can set that with the obvious one. What is negative one plus one? Just to prove that we'll get zero. You want the answer? Yes, using two's complement. Two's complement. Yes? One's complement. Okay, you want us to do what's, what's one's complement? One, 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 zero. And then what's two's complement? So, what, what happens when we add this one and one? Carry one, 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 truncate, zero, 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 zero. Negative one plus one is zero, which works just fine. And really, if you try out any numbers you want, right? Any, num any combination, you end up with the correct answer, right? Which is what we are working towards. Is this fine? Yes. Now, I mean, finding the decimal equivalent is obviously just doing the reverse here. It's quite easy. I don't, th I don't think we need to go through this. I don't know. Um, but you go through a series of, um, understand the, the heuristic here is given a binary number and you are told to say this number is in, was converted using two's complement. How would you convert it back into? Into decimal. <laughs> Please tell me if this is not weak. If you if you were given a number, to say one zero. Don't look at this. Um, one zero one zero. I hope this is what I wanted to do. And you are told this is in two's complement. Convert uh, two's complement binary value one zero one zero into decimal. 
What we're saying is you follow this heuristic here. It's opposite of what we're doing. You first of all check if the leftmost bit or the most significant bit is a one, then you know that the resulting number is going to be a negative, right? So if it's a zero, you know it's going to be positive. If it's a, if it's a one, you know it's going to be negative. If the most significant bit is a positive, just convert the binary number into decimal the way you normally would. But if the leftmost bit, the most significant bit is a one, you go through this process. What do you do first? You flip the bits. So this would be zero, one, zero one. and then you add a one. One and one, zero. one, one and zero, one. one and nothing, one. zero and nothing. Zero. And then you convert this resulting number into yes. decimal. Yes. What's the answer here? Sorry? And then finally, you put a negative sign. So this number, if this is a uh, binary representation using two's complement, the equivalent value is negative six. Is this making sense? This is two rules here, right? This, one, zero, one, zero, right? Just, just follow through the rules. Okay, fine. Um, like, I mean, there are a couple of examples. Oh, I had the one, zero, one here, which is what we just did. Um, Right, so, but, but then the question is how do we perform the subtraction? It turns out that the rules still hold, right? You just go through a series of um, process where you get uh, the two's complement equivalent to the numbers, and then you add the resulting binary numbers. If there's an overflow, again, you do the same thing, you just discard the bit, right? Same as like the normal conversion. So observe, how do we, we did this using one's complement, but how do we, evaluate seven base 10 minus three base 10 using two's complement. And again, we are using eight, eight bit representation, right? How would we do this? We go through a series of steps where we first of all convert seven into binary using, using two's complement. What is seven in binary using two's complement? You see it bit representation. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. one, one, one. Zero. So this is our seven, right? What is negative three using two, two's complement? Oh, you, you can't do it. Uh, can form a mental picture of this. We first of all, we evaluate positive three, right? Yes. In binary, which is eight bit representation. <coughs> okay, so this is like no binary. What do we do next? We flip the bits, right? One, 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 one zero, zero. And then we add a one. Right, so what we are saying is we are trying to add one, 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 zero, one, one. using a bit representation. One and one, zero. zero. One, one and one, zero. carry one. One, 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 carry one. One and 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 one, carry one. What do we do with the carry bit? Discard, throw it away. So the answer, when you evaluate seven minus three using two's complement, what's the answer here? What is this? Four, Four which is correct, right? It is, well, I don't know, maybe, is this, do you want it to be five? No. Okay. Is this making sense? It's just the rules, right? Hopefully this makes sense. Okay, great. If there are no questions, I mean, I just wanted to leave this discussion of like a representation of signed numbers with just this small little table that lays down all the different uh, equivalents that we, we had using the different methods, three different methods, right? Um, and hopefully you, at, at your own time, you figure out that there's some sort of pattern here, but not that it matters anyway. Um, we now know how to convert from positive numbers to negative number, how to convert negative numbers, negative decimal numbers into binary using either sign magnitude one's complement or two's complement. 
and how to perform the computations. But it turns out really um, that depending on how many bits you're using, you're typically faced with this issue of uh, integer overflow, which we've discussed and we sort of like have an idea of how to handle it, right? Um, the, the reason this is important is as, I guess as programmers, one of the things that you have to know beforehand whenever you're writing these so-called programs is to, to know the appropriate uh, data type that you're going to be using, right? So if you're working with, let's say, a financial application, you must know that using a byte to represent the number would be stupid, right? You'd be better off using a byte. Using eight bits would be silly because you'd be limited with the potential range of values that you'd use. You'd be better off using a double weight, for instance, 64 bits, right? If uh, the problem that you're solving just involves a short range of integer values, maybe you'd be better off just using eight bits, right? It turns out that everything is more to do with memory. There's no need to waste memory if you just need a small amount of it, right? Um, so usually what, what will happen is if, you, if you, you define a variable, you start working with a variable that uses a number that cannot fit in the bit representation you're using, you tend, that, you tend to run into exceptions or errors with your program, right? Can't compute, and we'll see these errors really when we start using Qt split just now. Um, sometimes, sometimes, depending on what sort of computation you're using, you end up with a truncated value. When you truncate the value, if you're, if you're using a bit representation that is not large enough to fit the number you're working with and the number is truncated, you end up with a wrong value. Why? Because the other bits that you wanted to use will not be used, they'll be truncated, right? Um, but obviously as a workaround, you need to pre-allocate memory or space beforehand for larger numeric values, right? Um, this will come up a lot. Uh, in this example, really, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to define a variable to hold the value 65,000. Right, um, but it turns out that the bit representation we were using here only goes up to I think this is is this eight eight bit representation? Or is this thirty two? What is this? I'm using a word here. Yeah, so it's probably half a word here, which is why we got an error, right? So the range of values we are using is um, only goes up to up to minus negative thirty two seven sixty eight. Okay, but so it turns out that I mean, there's no magic here. There's a way of computing the range of numbers that you're working with, right? Um, if we're to start with unsigned integers, so integer values without a sign, so it's like just positive numbers. You notice that uh, the total number of integers that you'd be working with is just two raised to the number of bit representation that you're using. But because you start from zero, it has to be one less two raised to the bit representation. So the simple formula you're using is just two to the power n minus one. If, if, we, if we are told to say we are, we are using, we, we are working with unsigned integers, just positive integers, no negative numbers, using four bit representation. Maybe four is, is a lot, right? Let's try two bit, two bit representation. Using two bit representation, how many numbers would we have? Just in numbers, how many integer values can you represent using Two bit representation. Okay, what are the numbers? Okay, using binary. What are the potential combination of numbers? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Using two bit representation. If we were to map these numbers, this is zero, this is, this is. So what we're saying is, when we're using two-bit representation, we only have four numbers, zero, one, two, three. Two to the power two minus one. 
is the range. Zero up to two to the power two minus one is the range we'll be working with. This is making sense. There's a formula for us to derive the integer range that we'll be working with using two-bit representation. Consigned integers. It's two raised to the power two minus one. Then we'll come up with a range. The range we are saying is, it's going to be zero up to two to the power two minus one, which is effectively zero two. Two to the power two is four minus one, which is zero two three. Zero one two three. This is making sense. So like if you're given like a four, four bit representation, the range of numbers you'll be working with is gonna be uh, zero two, two to the power four minus one, which is zero all the way up to, please. I find it's 0 to 15. Do you understand what we are saying now? Yes, yes. For, so for saying integers, really, it's not difficult for us to kind of do this. All right, and really, it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using. I mean, like if you're using byte representation, which is eight bits, same formula holds, right? Two to the power eight minus one, which is zero up to 255. Zero up to 255. Half away, which is 16 bit representation, is zero up to 65. Uh, 535, right? And then you can go all the way up to 64 bit if you want to. One way, to, I do approach this, is supposed to be power 52, not eight. Correct this in the slides that have been shared with you. Annotate this and say, correct this. I won't correct it deliberately. You must annotate it so that we correct this. Okay, so, but the question really is, if we can, if we have like a formula which we can derive using um, unsigned numbers, what about signed numbers where we have negative numbers? It turns out there's, formulas you can use as well. Right? You don't have to manually do it. So again, let's say we are working with um, signed integers using signed magnitude. Let's start with, uh, with uh, the simplest two-bit representation using signed magnitude. How many numbers do we first of all, how many numbers are we going to have? Using two-bit representation, how many numbers do we have? Four. Four. But when we have sign magnitude, remember that we must start with, uh, uh, what do we start with? <laughs> anyway, the point I was trying to drive at is because of the additional zero, if we have four numbers, you notice that uh, things change slightly there, right? <laughs> Is this making sense? Yeah. Sorry? What, what else can we, what, using, using sign magnitude, what other numbers can we represent using two-bit representation? Okay, negative, negative two, okay, fine. Ne positive two here, negative two. Okay, negative three, and positive three. But I thought we we're using two-bit representation. If we're using two-bit representation, how many numbers can we have in our range? Yes. How many do we have here? <laughs> okay, fine. I don't know if this is <laughs> making sense. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying that because we have two zeros, things change slightly here. There are two things that are changing here. Number one, we have two zeros. Number two, one of the bits must be a signed bit. So, if one of the bits is a signed bit, using two bit representation, we're only left with one bit to represent the magnitude. So the range has shrunk slightly. If this is confusing, what we are saying is, using signed magnitude, there's a formula. This is the formula. So if you're using two bit representation, the range of numbers that you are going to have, the signed integers that you're going to work with is positive or negative, two to the power two minus one, which is positive or minus. Is this correct? So the range of numbers you're going to be working with using sign magnitude is just this. 
And we know, we know why, because using sine magnitude, the leftmost bit has to be the sine bit, meaning that the, the number of potential values we can work with is shrunk. Again, really, it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using, it could be a byte, it could be half a word, it could be a word, it could be double word. All you have to do is just plug in the numbers, but remember, it's n minus two minus one. Right? It's n minus one because the sine bit, there's a bit which is no longer part of the uh, computation for the size of the integer, but it's reserved for the sign. But what about one's complement, right? Um, oh, this is wrong. Sorry, I apologize for this. Apologize for this. <sighs> what I was thinking here. So for one's complement, uh, oh yeah, it's the same thing. So for one's complement, because because we are faced with the same problem as as um, assign magnitude, the problem of having two zeros, same formula. Things only change when we are working with two's complement. Why do, we, do we, why do we have to change them? Because we've, we've kind of like solved the problem we had where we had two zeros. We effectively got rid of the negative zero. So instead of having a negative zero, we instead have an additional slot for a negative number. So the range then becomes negative two to power n minus one all the way up to positive two to power n minus one. Two to power n minus one minus one. Observe the, the difference here. For, for one's complement, we, we were subtracting ones from both sides. But, but in, in the case of two's complement, because we no longer have the problem of having a negative zero, the additional uh, placeholder or bit, or bit is going to be allocated to a negative number. So effectively, we'll be representing a range negative two to the power n minus one all the way up to positive two to the power n minus one minus one. Right? And so really, again, if we are to go through our range of, of positive numbers, using two bit representation, what is the range of numbers we can use to represent two's complement? We can represent using two's complement. If we are working with two's complement, what is the range of integer values we can use or we have access to? Negative two. Let's go with the formula: negative two to the power two all the way up to positive two to the power minus one, minus one, right? Don't forget that. So effectively the range of values we'll be working with is two all the way up to, thank you. And, and this makes sense really because we know that if we have two bit representation, forget the signs, if we have two bit representation, how many values are we going to be working with? Using two-bit representation, how many values, how many integers, the total number of integers? Is it 10, 20, 55, 1,000, 1 million? Four, right? So if it's four, we know here that it's going to be negative two, negative one, positive zero, positive one, right? That's it, one, two, three, four. Just making sense, and really it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using, um, you just have to plug in the numbers. Now, granted, I mean, if you want to, you can probably form a mental picture and try and simulate, oh, what range can I have here? But a boo -hoo, lo and behold, you can never, uh, good luck writing down the range on the piece of paper of using the two-bit representation, right? Formula, that's a key thing here, not the formula, the differences in the formulas, right? Is this making sense? Yes. Now, if guys, if you don't have any questions, I, I guess we'll end here. Um, I don't know if there are any comments for like number systems and, and all these fancy things we've been doing. Are there any concerns, comments, clarifications, additions, subtractions, divisions, multiplication? Yeah. Okay. When do we use the eight bit presentation? It depends. It's it's contextual. You will be told. So if there's a question that comes, you will be told. When we start working with QT spin, the practical parts, it is you to decide or the question in the programming sessions, the few programming sessions we have where you'll be taught to say, represent this using half a word, represent this using a byte, 
you present this using one word, represent this using double word, and once you look at the MIPS architecture, you shall know, you know, you already know that a byte is just eight bits, half a word is 16 bits, a word is 32 bits, double word is 64 bits, right? So this is, this is what we're saying. Yes? It turns out it is. The, the, the implications on, on the, the bit representation is crucial. We said that we should be careful because of integer overflow. It's extremely important. Now, so here's the thing, right? Look at this. Um, if we insanely say that we are going to be representing our computer numbers as integers, as integer values, do you think it would make sense for us to use 8-bit representation? No, how long is a computer number? It has 10 digits, right? So there'll be an overflow. So it, I don't know if I'm answering your question here, but yeah, okay. Are there any concerns, comments? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No, I honestly don't know. Let's, go, let's calculate this together, right? If we, if we are saying, we com what's a computer number? 2018. 1654. 16. So 10 digits, right? If we're saying it's going to be 2 to the power 16, this number must, uh, uh, and we choose to say we are representing, now it's, in an ideal case, this would have to be unsigned because computer numbers are always positive. But let's say we're using signed integers. What is the formula? What range of values can we, can we have using 16-bit representation? It's negative 2 to power? Fine, don't have to memorize. We'll go to the formula. There we go. 2 to the power? 16? Uh-huh. 2? Yeah, so what's the answer here? In, in fact, for computer numbers, just concentrate on the positive side. What's 2 to the power 15 minus 1? Spend the whole day in here if we rely on you. Sorry? Would, would, would six bit representation solve your problem? If it was, if, it, if it we're working with signed numbers? No, because the range only goes up to where? 32, 768. Right? Yes. Guys, do you remember where this number, where we saw this number just now? I saw people saying, ah, where did that come from? Well, you now you know, right? Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. So we had an overflow here because we were working with a 16-bit representation number, but uh, this is much smaller than the range, it's much larger than the range we're working with. Sorry? Oh, sorry. Uh, can you see now? We had an overflow here. We, we were defining a variable I know it's gibberish, but we're defining a variable to hold the value 65,000, but we're working with 16-bit representation. 65,000 is greater than the range we have for 16-bit representation. We can only go up to positive 32,768. Anything beyond that results in an error. If you're handling exceptions, you'd like truncate the number, you end up with the wrong value altogether. Is this making sense, guys? Yes. Hopefully it does. Okay. Um, so if, if, there are, if there are no more questions, then maybe, are there any more que questions, no? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that thing, you know, I've, I've been behind with work. Here is a promise now that will work. And I, hey, I, I want to start with, with this, right? I think there's something interesting happening. And I don't know if people have realized this. I, I think we've got into a stage where maybe we find this interesting or or maybe we understand what's going on. We are asking for assessments. Thank you very much. The take home quiz shall either be available tonight or eight in the morning tomorrow. This I promise. And then you shall submit it end of day. Deadline is 23.59 uh, on Tuesday. Right, so you, you have Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday effectively. Oh, sorry, Monday and Tuesday. 
There will be two, though. That's why you have Monday and Tuesday. That's what I've done. If it's going to be available by Monday, you have Monday and Tuesday. What are you talking about? Are there, are there any other 